hope you understand now the principles behind what's called the zero trust model. Now, the zero trust model, just so you know, is not just a Microsoft thing. Many different companies out there are are taking on this uh, the same type of model. Microsoft being one of them. The zero trust model is a simple idea, and that is don't trust anything, don't trust anyone. Uh, the concept is to always assume that there's a breach. Okay. So there's never any assumption by the Azure environment or the Microsoft 365 services that this person that is trying to authenticate or this device that is trying to authenticate is who it or this person says they are. Okay, It just automatically verifies everything. So the, the, the logic here is verify explicitly. Always authenticate and give authorization based on whoever the user is or whoever the device is. The other thing is to always operate off the principle of least privilege. What that means is, is that everything we do in Azure, we should always be operating off the principle of least privilege, which means you always give out the least amount of rights to someone that they need to do their job. Or if you're talking about a device, you're giving out the least amount of rights to a device that still allows that device to do the the job role it's it's needing to perform so that is what least privilege is and then again the other thing is when it comes to administration in the zero trust model we work off of what we call a um, a, a JIT strategy which stands for just in time uh, administration and then there's another strategy called JEA which is just enough access all right, which of course goes hand in hand with least privilege. So the idea being that I'm going to give you access when you need it during a, a short period of time that you need it, and then the, the permissions will be taken away from you when you no longer need it. Okay, uh, Azure has the ability to use something called PIM, Privileged Identity Management, where I can schedule uh, somebody to give me given access to something for a certain period of time, and then after a while it gets it goes away. For example, if I'm the head admin and I'm going out of town next week, and I have a junior level admin that needs to be given the ability to create users. I can schedule that person the ability to create users just next week. I can also make it where they do not have the power until they go and claim it, which means it audits, a, it, it generates an audit entry and everything. And then when they do claim that, that, uh, that power, it goes away after an hour, and then they have to go claim it again. Uh, and then it goes away permanently after, let's say, Friday of next week. I can do that with this concept uh, that I have. Um, the other piece of, of zero touch is, again, always assuming a breach. That involves the uh, Azure Identity Protection features and all that, where you have artificial intelligence that are monitoring your users to, uh, to confirm what they're doing at any given time. So you start with your identities here. Your identities being user, they mention human, non-human, strong authentication, and then also your endpoints. So what are your endpoints? Those are your different devices, right? That could be a desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone, whatever it may be. Whether you're users or a device, you are authenticating uh, to a directory service such as Azure AD. Now, when you are authenticating, the concept of zero touch is we have policies that are that have to be uh, enforced in which uh, a person has to uh, uh, basically pass through those policies. If the policies don't allow you to connect in, then you're, then you're not able to access whatever it is. In Azure, we have something called conditional access policies and compliance policies that do just that. Compliance policies are going to control whether or not your device is at, is at a certain level of compliance. Maybe you have to have a certain operating system. There's got to be a certain version. You have to have certain updates on the device. Uh, and if you don't meet all of those, you're not compliant. And then uh, with pairing that with, with what's called conditional access policies, um, you know, I could require that your the user must also not be seen as any kind of a threat. Um, now, how would a user be seen as a threat? It might be the user's logging on during a time of day they normally don't log on. It might be that the user's using an IP address that they normally don't use. Maybe they're from a different internet connection. Instead of logging on in New York, they're logging on from China, right? Those are all things that can be seen as a threat. And so with, uh, 
with these different policies in place, I can decide whether or not you're getting in. And, the, and this is all automated. So I can put all these policies in place ahead of time uh, and then determine whether or not that a person's going to get in based on that. All right. And then also we can control things like whether or not they're coming in from a public, the public internet or they're on a private network. Uh, and then from there, we also have um, the, the giving the rights out to the actual data itself. So whether or not you're getting access to your email or some kind of, of sensitive information, whether or not you're getting access to applications, okay? And then even the infrastructure itself, such as virtual machines, which would be IaaS, maybe platform as a service, which could be some kind of web-based containers that they're given access to, um, uh, or web app service of some kind, that's all part of that as well, all right? Uh, and the administration of that is also, again, controlled by the, the concept of JIT, just-in-time uh, administration, okay? Um, a company can also draft an organizational policy where they, they have a document that kind of outlines what their goals are, and that's a good strategy to, to draft out a document that kind of outlines what our goals are, and then from there you can sort of create that based on the, uh, the compliance policy, conditional access policy. But again, the main thing to get across here is that the zero t trust model, the zero trust model is all about uh, verifying everything and verifying explicitly who and what is authenticating. And the other principle is use the least, print, uh, the least privilege access strategy. Um, you only give the least privileges that someone or something needs to to, uh, to do their job, all right? And then when it comes to administration, you always use the strategy of just-in-time administration and just enough access. So that's J-I-T, J-E-A. Um, just-in-time administration, just enough access, okay? And then the zero-touch model is also, is always under the influence of always assume there's a breach. So that's why it's so important that we verify explicitly. But that is the idea of the zero trust, to, uh, zero trust model. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video. And I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel. So I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right. Thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.